Okay, this is AP, AB, and BC Calc. We are doing Unit 2, Section 7, which is derivatives of cosine, sine, e to the x, and natural log of x. I'm also going to throw in a to the x just for fun. Uh, so let's go ahead and, and learn some differentiation rules. So when we learn new differentiation rules, you should make note cards to study them. And I'm going to show you what that looks like on the next slide. Um, you want to have these memorized for quick recall. It's going to be really important. These are sort of like the equivalent of memorizing your times tables, right? If you don't know what 6 times 7 is, it's a problem. If you don't know 2 times 3, it's a problem. So you're going to want to memorize. Uh, we end up with about uh, two dozen differentiation rules, but a lot of them are somewhat similar. Uh, so you already know a few. You know the power rule, right? Um, which is x to the n equals n, x to the n minus 1, right? Uh, or the derivative of x to the n, rather. You know the constant rule. We talked about that one. Uh, you know uh, kx, right? We talked about how if you differentiate a linear term, you just get the slope, which is k. Um, you also know sum and difference if we want to list. They're not here, but you know uh, we did talk in the last video about sum and difference rules. So if you wanted to make a note card, right, you also know uh, that the derivative... Oh, I'll switch colors for a sec. Hang on. Um, sorry for the beach ball. So we also know that the derivative, we're just so beach ball-y today, with respect to x of, let's say, f of x plus or minus g of x is just f prime of x plus or minus g prime of x, right? Uh, so we know a couple. Today we're going to learn five new ones. We're going to learn uh, that the derivative of sine x with respect to x is cosine x. So derivative of sine is cosine. Derivative of cosine is negative sine. Uh, the derivative of e to the x is itself. e to the x is a special function, so the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. Uh, the derivative of a to the x, right, where a is some other number that is not the natural base, is the natural log of a times a to the x. And the derivative of the natural log of x is a 1 over x. So you're going to want to make note cards for these. Uh, you can certainly pause me now if you want to make a note card now, but I'm going to go and show you what I mean by making note cards on the next slide. So here's what I mean by saying make note cards, right? Um, on one side of the note card should be the thing that you're differentiating, right? So on one side, you're going to have d dx of the, of the x to the n, right? On the other side, you should write what happens when you differentiate, which is n x to the n minus 1. Now, for sine and cosine, right, and actually let me adjust this because you're missing the edge a little. For sine and cosine, which have a sign, uh, not sine as in s-i-n-e, but sine as in s-i-g-n, Right? See how um, the derivative of sine is a positive cosine and the derivative of cosine is a negative sine. One of the big tricks that you're going to see on an AP is that they kind of bank on people forgetting which one of these comes out negative. So I tend to color code my note cards. I make the ones that have a negative derivative in uh, red on my note card. Right, I write them in red marker or red crayon because we have a toddler or red ink if you're using a pen, whatevs. And I write my positive ones in blue. Um, so I would write that the derivative of sine is positive cosine. I'd write that in blue. Derivative of sine is cosine. And that way, if you panic on a test or you start to forget, you can close your eyes, take a deep breath, and you have another layer to trying to remember that information. Because if you think, t take a deep breath and you think back and realize that the note card was written in red ink, then maybe that helps you remember that there was a negative on the derivative. Totally up to you. It's just an approach. Um, I'm going to suggest that you go ahead and invest in buying a couple packs of index cards because the best way to learn these is to quiz yourself. Just like when you were a kid learning your multiplication tables, you quiz yourself. So, Or you had a, a family member quiz you. Right? All right. So we're going to go ahead and differentiate using the rules that we know. Now, I have them memorized, so I'm not going to flip back and forth, but I will reference the ones that I'm using, right? So I have a 6 in front of an e to the x, right? My f prime of x, there's a 6, which is just a multiple, right, sitting in front of an e to the x. The derivative of e to the x is e to the x. So I just get 6e to the x again. Nothing happened. That's it. Um, for my g prime of x, right, I'm going to have a 2 in front of, well, I'm going to differentiate cosine, and when I do that, I get negative sine plus a 3, and when I differentiate sine, I get regular cosine. So what my answer is going to look like is a negative 2 sine of x plus a 3 cosine of x. right? And it, nobody thinks you're cheating if you jump right to this answer. Like if you don't need this, I'm just trying to show you where I get those numbers from. When I differentiate my h, right, my h prime of x, I'm going to do each piece. The, the derivative of the negative 2x to the second would be negative 4x to the first. The derivative of the 5 to the x, well, that's that a to the x pattern. That's going to be the natural log of 5 times the 5 to, to the x. And that's about as nice as this gets. Honestly, you probably just wouldn't write the x to the first. You just write it as an x. Uh, make sure that you don't try to make this a 25 because natural log of 5 is a number by itself. And the x exponent is only on the 5. Okay, so that's my answer. 
All right, you go ahead and give P1 a try. Uh, pause me if you don't want me to do it. So this is going to be f prime of x is going to be a negative 4 times the derivative of natural log, which is 1 over x. So I'm going to get a negative 4 over x. Sorry, we beach balled a little. Uh, here, right, my g prime. Notice again that you never say g is the same as g prime because they're generally not. I know that there are occasionally rare circumstances, like this one in E1a, where the function and its derivative were the same, but it's very rare. So I'm going to differentiate the 2e to the x. Well, that's just a 2 times an e to the x because e to the x differentiates to e to the x minus a 5 times the derivative of the cosine. Well, that's a negative sine of x. So when I clean this up, my g prime of x is going to be 2e to the x plus 5 sine of x. And then for my last one, um, I would suggest that you rewrite this as a one half in front. You don't have to. I think a lot of us, it feels a little bit more natural. So notice that's not my h prime, that's just h. So my h prime is going to be, I'm going to drop the four down in front and get four halves, which is two x to the third plus, and then I have to use that a to the x rule, right? Because that three is the base, not the exponent. And so I'm going to get natural log of three times three to the x. And that's it. All right, moving on. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and do our classic tangent and normal line problem, right? We see that it's a line, so the first thing I know is I need two things. I need a point, which I can find using not calculus, right? So my point is going to be pi over 3 comma blank. And you're probably thinking, oh, Hogan, I hate you, unit circle. And you are right, this requires your knowledge of the unit circle. So f of pi over 3 is going to be a 4 times the sine of pi over 3, right? Pi over 3 is right here on the unit circle. So that's going to be a 4 times a root 3 over 2. I'm going to get that this is a 2 root 3. And if you were thinking, but Hogan, I don't remember the unit circle, well, then I'm going to say, but person listening to this video, go study your unit circle because it's fair game. Uh, the second thing I need is a slope, right? The tangent slope, right, for A, I know my tangent slope is going to be f prime at 4. Oh, sorry, not 4, my bad, pi over 3. I don't know what my brain did. It just checked out. I saw this 4 and my brain died. Okay. Uh, and my normal slope is going to be whatever the opposite reciprocal of that first thing is, right? So if I find the tangent slope first, I can find the normal slope. So let's go ahead and find f prime of x. Well, f prime of x is going to be 4 times the derivative of sine, which is cosine. That means that my f prime of pi over 3 is going to be a 4 cosine of pi over 3, which is a 4 times a 1 half, because again, totally know your unit circle, or a 2, right? So that's a 2. So I now know that my answer to a is y minus the y value equals my m x minus the x value. If you want to add the 2 root 3 over, you can. So to solve for y, you'd get 2 times the quantity x minus pi over 3 plus a 2 root 3. Great. And then the trick is that if you can find the tangent line, you can find the normal line because the normal line just involves you taking this 2 and turning it into the opposite reciprocal, right? So uh, once I know that my tangent slope once I know my tangent slope was a 2, I know that my normal slope was a negative 1 half. So I can just copy my own work, right? I plagiarize myself. I copy everything that I wrote, except I change the slope to a negative 1 half. Now let's say I had found the tangent slope wrong, and then I incorrectly found the normal slope because I flipped my own slope and found, like, I flipped and changed sign to my slope and my slope was wrong. Um, that's okay. That still shows that I understand what I'm doing, and I would lose a point for not finding the first slope right, but I wouldn't lose the point for doing the correct thing to the second slope. All right, so you go ahead and try P2. Uh, you're going to find the equation of the tangent and normal line uh, at the given x value, right? So pause me if you want. So the first thing I need is a point which does not involve calculus at all. 2 comma whatever f of 2 is, which is 5 natural log of 2. For the record, that's, that's the y value. I know you don't love it, but that's the y value, 5 natural log of 2. Second thing I need is a slope, right? I know that my tangent slope should be f prime evaluated at 2, and that my normal slope should be the opposite reciprocal of that, right? So f prime of x is going to be a 5 times the derivative of natural log, which is a 1 over x. So my f prime is a 5 over x. That means that my f prime of 2 is a 5 over 2. So that's my tangent slope. So now I know my tangent slope is a 5 halves, which means negative 2 fifths is my normal slope, and now I can answer my question, right? So y minus the y value, which I get is an ugly 5 natural log of 2, equals my slope, which is 5 halves, x minus 2. 
Or if I want to solve for y, I get y equals 5 halves the quantity x minus 2 plus a 5 natural log of 2. Great. Now, if I then plagiarize myself to find my, my normal line, right? Again, you shouldn't be reinventing the wheel. You did all of the work already. You shouldn't redo work you already did. You should be like, oh, cool, I get it. I just need to change this 5 halves. So my normal slope is, or my normal line rather, is going to be y equals negative 2 fifths times the quantity x minus 2 plus that 5 natural log of 2. And again, you don't have to solve for y, but if you're going to solve for y, please don't distribute the slope. Please leave it in this form. All right, let's go ahead and talk about 8. So, uh, not 8, rather E3, sorry, it's my slide 8. So, I mentioned before that you're very rarely, if ever, actually going to have to use the long form of the derivative. And here's what I mean by pattern recognition. I look at this, and what I need to spot is I need to spot that this is the derivative of sine of x. That's what this is saying, right? Because remember that f prime of x was the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h, right? So this is saying what's the derivative, like so this whole expression is saying what's the derivative of this? So the answer to this is the derivative of sine is cosine. Now are there other ways to get to this answer? Yeah, you could use some, some trig identities that you probably haven't thought of since pre-calc or maybe that you barely thought of when you were in pre-calc and you can hate your life. Or you can spot that this pattern is saying what's the derivative of sine x and then you can use the, anti, or the derivative patterns that we learned, all those differentiation rules, to say, oh, I know the derivative of sine x. So this is about spotting the pattern, right? The same thing's true here. You could use log properties to simplify this and you will hate it and it will be miserable. Or you can notice, oh, hey, this is this pattern where this is the function. This entire thing is saying f of x equals 3 natural log of x. We want f prime. Right? This is the function. So I say, okay, well, if f of x is 3 natural log of x, then the derivative is 3 times the derivative of natural log. So I'm going to get that this whole thing is a 3 over x. And you could, could really do a ton of math to, to figure that out. But what they're looking for when they hand you this is they're looking for you to make that pattern recognition that this is the definition of a derivative. Um, so you're very rarely going to be asked to actually do the derivative the long way. If you, knowing what you know now, if you go back and look at some of those videos where I explained to you how to use the difference quotient to differentiate and I told you that I could just skip to the end on the answer, it becomes more obvious why because I was essentially doing the power rule on the function I was looking at. I was looking at a function and saying, boom, power rule in my head, there's the answer because I knew that that's what they were asking for. That's the goal here is you're not going to be finding the derivative the long way. You're going to be spotting the pattern. All right, so you go ahead and try, uh, try a P3, right? Um, if done correctly, these problems involve basically no work, right? You're spotting that this is the derivative pattern, and then you're saying, boom, I'm done. That's all I want. So pause me if you don't want me to do it. So this is my f of x, right? This is clearly asking for f prime of x. So once I know that, the derivative of cosine is negative sine. That's it. That's really the whole deal. Same thing. This whole thing is clearly asking for the derivative where this is the original function. So I say, oh, cool, the derivative, so the derivative with respect to x, up here what I did was I did the derivative with respect to x of cosine of x, and that's how I got this. Here I'm doing the derivative with respect to, to x of 5 e to the x. Well, when you derive e to the x, you just get e to the x. So your answer ends up being a 5 e to the x. And that's it. Um, so again, that's, that's our video, uh, and that's the gist, is you need to have that pattern recognition ability.